could you contextualize the the impact, the positive impact that a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie has had on this Mavericks team, even though it's still a pretty small sample size? Yeah, I think it's definitely been uh, very substantial because, you know, without Dinwiddie in the picture, uh, you know, you send a, a blitz against uh, Luka, and then he has to get the ball up, and, you know, most likely it'll be Jalen Brunson uh, attacking downhill, and him being a smaller guard, that kind of limits your options. But Dinwiddie thrives getting into the paint and making the play happen, whether for himself or for a teammate. And his catch-and-shoot uh, numbers have been very strong as well uh, since the trade. And I think, uh, you know, that's been uh, higher than you, you'd expect, and it'll probably come down a little bit for sure. But, um, you know, just all-around versatility has been very uh, helpful to have. Grant, what has impressed you most about specifically what Luka Doncic has done? You saw him win, you know, Western Conference, you know, Player of the Month. You know, them going seven and three in the ridiculous numbers that he's been putting up. But for you, what specifically about his game has changed or improved to see him go to the next level that he's been on over the last, you know, month or so here? I think the biggest thing uh, has been his step back threes and his just perimeter shot creation in general has been uh, clicking at a very high level. Uh, I think he was shooting like 28.9% um, on the off the dribble threes uh, before, you know, the, uh, I think the month of February, um, something along those lines. And I think, uh, you know, when you're hitting at a 40% clip and you're taking that degree of difficulty of shots, uh, you know, it's incredibly challenging for a defense, especially when a guy uh, like Luca's, you know, mismatch hunting with the switches. You know, you're you really have to be cognizant about what personnel you're putting on the floor, uh, you know, throughout a game, or else he'll chew you apart like he does Zubac, um, or you know, just bigs in general. It's Grant Afseth of Mavericks SI with us here in the Nosebleed Seats via the Diamond Factory Fan Hotline. So, Grant, you're a bit of a, a Mavericks basketball calculator. You, uh, you you got all the Mavericks numbers, super interesting, great follow on Twitter at Grant Afseth. And uh, I'm just curious of all, all the numbers and all the different ways and perspectives that you can you can look at this Mavericks team. What What's the thing that jumps out to you the most as, as somebody who, who dives deep into these things when it comes to the Mavericks? What What's the number or uh, aspect of this team that just is the most interesting to you at this point? Yeah, I think uh, just uh, Spencer Dinwiddie has been a very interesting uh, component of the team to kind of track and just see the success that the Mavericks have had with him. And I think just also the, the turnaround and clutch uh, execution the team's experience uh, since February 1st has been very uh, interesting to see as well. They went from like the worst clutch net rating entering the month of February uh, at minus 35.1 to having over a 30 uh, net rating since. And they've gone 8-3 and three, uh, in games that have uh, required a clutch situation. And, uh, you know, just seeing, uh, you know, Luca close at a high level um, and just, you know, having help when closing uh, has been very intriguing as well. Grant, I'm interested in your perspective on this as well because you talked about, you know, what they've been doing in the clutch. And obviously, you know, from Jason Kidd's perspective, you know, he's gotten a lot of praise for the way that he's been able to handle this team so far this season. From a tactical standpoint or just an adjustment standpoint, what has Jason Kidd been able to do with this team, whether it be in clutch situations, defensively, that has given you an indication that this team obviously looks much different than the one that we saw under Rick Carlisle the last couple of years? I would say a big difference has been defensively. I think they, um, they've they had the big kind of play up, like Dwight Powell, uh, with his uh, you know more mobile uh, skill set than uh, Christoph Porzingis, um, and being able to switch and have him run around has been very helpful. And I think him just playing closer to the level, uh, you know, in screening situations and switching at the veer line as opposed to, uh, you know, playing at a deep drop, I think that's been a very uh, big difference uh, in the defense where, you know, take a guy like John Morant in the, you know, the recent matchup, um, he, he struggled against the Mavericks at times because, you know, while Dwight Powell is not an elite rim protector by any stretch, you know, a bit undersized in comparison to those that are elite rim protectors. You know, he's not giving up that space uh, to get to like a comfortable floater or a pull up uh, when those types of guys are turning the corner, and that that makes a big difference as opposed to just dropping back and letting them do what they do best. It's Grant Afseth, Mavericks uh, SI, with us here in the nosebleed seats. Uh, what what has your evaluation been of Nico Harrison to this point, Grant? 
Yeah, I think um, I think he's done a very good job. I think uh, you know the Reggie Bullock signing got off to a slow start, but you know I think he's been a key contributor uh, since he's found a rhythm and returned from health and safety protocol. Um, you know, have, you can't have too many uh, knockdown shooters that play defense. And his uh, versatility has been helpful alongside, you know, another green Z wing, uh, Dorian Finney Smith, and a lot of those lineups. And, uh, you know, I think being bold uh, in, in moving on when you know it's time to move on from certain players as well has been, you know, uh, a good thing from any management. And he did that with uh, the Christos Porzingis trade. You know, I think that took a lot of people by surprise and just showing that willingness to take a chance and then, uh, you know, just see what you have afterward. Uh, taking that calculated risk with, you know, like a, a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, um, you know, seeing him uh, come, be brought in to play a key role uh, off the bench as the, you know, the lead ball handler uh, while you have Jalen Brunson move to the starting lineup. That was a void that needed to be filled and took a chance to fill it. But you also bring in a, you know, front court shooter, um, you know, that, that can shoot off the move and provide some versatility. Um, in ways that you, you know, benefited from Christoph Porzingis when his three ball was clicking. I think that was a very intriguing risk, and, you know, they're seeing it play out uh, kind of like the, I guess you could say the ceiling of it, you know, with them playing at such a high level early on. Biggest surprise when it comes to Jason Kidd, positive or negative? I think, honestly, um, I, think it, I think he's been a positive, uh, I wouldn't say surprise, but just seeing the, I think it's a little surprising just seeing the difference in, you know, just the positive frame of mind that players, um, you know, have with him as the head coach versus Rick Carlisle. Just seeing, you know, how much that impacts them to, you know, play hard on defense uh, and play for each other and, you know, things of that nature has been uh, pretty intriguing to see. And I don't think that would that'd necessarily be surprising because that was a big part of bringing him in. But, um uh, you know, I just think uh, it's something to, to, you know, be interested to see play out in real time and then, you know, just be uh, come playoff time. I'm curious to see kind of how he handles, you know, mid-series adjustments and things of that nature. Um, and then we'll have a really good uh, perspective on, uh, you know, his first year. Grant, there's a team every year, whether it be the NBA, the NFL, wherever, as you get close to playoff time, the adage we use is that that's, that, that's not the team that you want to see come playoff time. Do you think the Mavericks are becoming that team that when teams look around the league, they say, hey, we don't want any part of the Mavericks in the first round. What makes that team potentially a dangerous first round opponent for anyone they'll see in, in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah, it sounds a little cliche, but when you got a player as talented as Luka Doncic, I think that definitely uh, is where you kind of start to look uh, at other teams that you might be matching up and being like, yeah, I don't want to face that team. It's kind of like the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, you know, Kevin Durant, uh, no matter what speed they are, no one wants to play them. And uh, I think uh, that's kind of along the line with Luka Doncic. With, you know, I think he's got the highest career uh, playoff scoring average. You know, he hasn't played like 50 games or anything of, of that kind. But, you know, he's the way he can just light it up in the playoffs, um, you, you don't want to face that. And I think, you know, that that's number one, two, and three on the list. Is there a uh, is there a particular matchup you like the most when it comes to the playoffs for this Mavericks team? Is it perhaps Golden State, or when they get Draymond back, is that just a completely different team? I think it is a completely different team because there's lineups where you go from having the Monty and the Elisa, uh handling those uh, those ball screen situations uh, to having Draymond Green handling them, and I think. Uh, like his versatility, assuming that he stays healthy and everything, I think I, I don't really. I wouldn't really want to play, uh, no matter who my team is. Uh, Golden State, especially uh, if Steph Curry gets hot, that's a really hard uh, momentum swinging type of uh, matchup to, to necessarily like you know game plan for and face throughout a seven game series. It's kind of hard to necessarily say you want any matchup in particular in the West right now because you know even the Denver Nuggets, you know having you know an undersized center, uh, Nikola Jokic being you know. Uh, MVP level player, that's not necessarily something you would want to face. And then they might have Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. at some point as well. And then, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, I, w I would have to go with them if I had to pick one, mostly because of success the Mavericks have experienced in the regular season against them. And, uh, you know, just, just trying their hand again. Uh, you know, John Morant's a very special player, but, um, you know, I think they are better suited to handle him than they are uh, Nikola Jokic. 